advice. The opinions and views of the hosts and guests do not reflect those of the station. Good evening Philippines, my name is Tibuk Mindanao, Bisayas, Ub Salazon, Bismillah, Rahmanirahim, Assalamualaikum, Warahmatullahi Ta'ala, Warahmatullahi Ta'ala, Ito po ang Republika, ako si Eric Espina. Uh, nito mga ilang linggo po ay nakita natin sa ating mga pahayagan ang tungkol po sa usapang pangkapayapaan, patungkol po sa MNLF at uh, lalo na po sa MILF. Pagdating po sa MILF, mukhang hindi po malinaw kung ano yung mga mga alituntunin na, na naipatutupad o ang naging usapin sa pagpagitan po ng ating uh, Uh, peace negotiator na si Marvick Leonen sapagkat naging sikreto po ito. At uh, matatandaan po na nagkaroon po ng labanan no, sa, uh, sa Camp Abu Bakar no, at meron tayong mga uh, kaunting mga photos dito. Ito po ang uh, helicopter na sinakyan ni Pangulong Era papunta sa Camp Abu Bakar. Marami po itong mga helicopter na ito. Ito po yung during the uh, final takeover. Ito yung mga helicopter na naglanding malapit sa Camp Abu Bakar. And then, ito po ay para lang matanda ng ating publiko na nakuha po itong uh, kampong ito. Ano? And then next, ito po ang uh, mga photos. No? Bilis na lang ito. Sunod. Okay. Ito po ang uh, epekto ng isang, uh, isang bomba kung gaano kalaki. Makikita nyo po na ang, ang diferensya ng mga bahay kumpara sa laki ng bomba no, pag sumabog. Uh, ganong kalaki po. Tapos itong parang dito sa baba, yan po yung ano ng truck. Ang sunod na photo, ito po ang uh, bahay na nasira. And then sunod na photo, <coughs> ito po yung mga ilan sa mga na-capture ng mga sandata at mga bala. Ito sa Camp Abu Bakar, sunod po. Ito po ilan pa rin sa mga nakuha o nakubkub ng mga kagamitan doon. Sunod po. Ayan pa. <coughs> Then, sunod po. Ito yung pagbaba po ng bandila ng MILF. And then, sunod po. Ito yung pagtaas po ng bandila ng Pilipinas doon sa Camp Abu Bakar. And then, sunod po. Ito yung ating sandatahang lakas. <coughs> And then, ito yung uh, si uh, Presidente Erap at uh, dating uh, Chief of Staff uh, Angelo Reyes. And then, at si Secretary <coughs> ng Estado nandun, yung inspection ni Presidente Era, pang mga armas din. Tapos, ito, iba pa yung mga kagamitan. Ito yung pinag-uusapan. Nag, uh, dito, eh, pinapasalamatan ni Presidente Era pang ating mga hukbo. Sunod. Ito po yung uh, mosque na uh, malayo po doon sa lugar na di o mano ay sanda kumain daw ng uh, nagkaroon ng uh, budol fight. Hindi ho totoo dahil ang kinainan po ay doon po sa eskwelahan at hindi po sa moske. So mali po yung mga balibalita. Okay? And then huli. Ito po yung papauwi na po. Makikita ninyo na nandito yung moske. Dito po nag naganap yung kainan. Kaya malayo po. Okay? Dito yung nagkaroon ng flag raising ceremony. Okay? So malinaw. Okay, pinakita lang po namin yon para lang uh, medyo to refresh our memories. Uh, at uh, kasi uso ngayon ang usapang pagkapayapaan between the MNLF, MILF. Sa MILF, hindi natin alam kung ano nangyayari. Sa MNLF yata, eh, mukhang uh, kawawa naman yata si Brother Norm Misori. Kasi parang hindi yata masyadong pinapansin ang ating gobyerno. Dahil mas, uh, mukhang mas kwela ang MILF ngayon sa panahon ito. We have uh, as our guest here who also have proposals as to the peace process. 
and uh, we would like to listen to their proposals to for peace in uh, southern Mindanao. We have uh, His Excellency Marquis uh, General Habib uh, Nikabulin, who is the MNLF uh, political emissary. Okay, we have uh, uh, Baron Ito. Baron, yes. Uh, Baron uh, Walid Carbonell, uh, Sultanate uh, Public Affairs Minister. Uh, and then His Royal Highness Prince Omar Kiram, Sultanate Foreign Minister. Uh, good evening to everybody and welcome to the program. Good evening. Good evening. Salamat. We're very good evening. happy to have you here. Okay. Um, ano ho ba? What is, uh, what is our solution to the problem in uh, southern Mindanao? And uh, what is happening? Because uh, the papers say that uh, the MNLF has declared uh, independence for Mindanao. We should uh, get... A anybody can jump into the, the, the discussion. We have an MNLF officer here with us. Yes, please. Good day. Magandang araw sa iyo, uh, kapatid Eric. Yes. Uh, at magandang uh, araw rin sa lahat ng mga taga-subaybay yes, yes. ng iyong programa. Yes. Actually, uh, the uh, declaration uh, made uh, yes. happen right uh, at the uh, residence of uh, the chairman of the Moro National Liberation, Liberation Front okay. uh, in Sambuanga City mm -hmm. uh, in March 18. Mm -hmm. Usually, it is uh, celebrated mm -hmm. uh, yearly by the freedom fighters mm -hmm. to uh, commemorate uh, the uh, founding of the Moro National Liberation mm -hmm. Front. Mm -hmm. So it was declared actually uh, to the consensus mm -hmm. by uh, the members of uh, the Bangsamoro National uh, National People's Parliament. Okay. Yeah. Uh, on the basis on of uh, the uh, failure. Mm -hmm of uh, the uh, Bandung talk uh, mm -hmm. happened uh, early this month. Mm -hmm. So that was uh, actually considered the uh, end to uh, uh, the uh, negotiation in as far as uh, that declaration was concerned. Mm -hmm. So uh, they declared that uh, uh, the uh, Mindanao uh, should be now mm -hmm. uh, recourse mm -hmm. to uh, exercising the uh, right to self-determination. Mm -hmm. so right. was, was it the entire Mindanao uh, that was declared uh, for yeah. independence or was it just part of Mindanao or what was, what was the tenor of the uh, declaration? Mindanao Island, of course, and all islands that comprise uh, Mindanao, that uh, of course includes Palawan, Basilan, okay. uh, Sulu, okay, Kamigin, uh, Samal, okay. uh, Tawi -tawi. Tawi -tawi. Okay. including Sabah. Including Sabah, of course, not okay. Was that was that very clearly stated? Sabah included? Yes, it was. It was uh, stated. What, what happened to the negotiations uh, that was uh, where Indonesia intermediated between the Philippines and uh, the MNLF? Uh, actually. This negotiation, uh, uh, they call it revisit of yes. the 1996 uh, final peace agreement. Yes, yes. After the incarceration of Chairman Noor. Yes, yes. So the both sides agreed to revisit the 1996 uh, final peace agreement, uh -huh. which is believed that the phase two of the agreement has not been implemented. Okay. So in so far to this effect, uh, both parties have been in series of uh, negotiations. Uh -huh. And the last one was in Bandung, okay. a city in Indonesia. Okay. So it was reported actually that the... There was the a failure of the talks. Yes, course. of course. Well, the, what was the obstacle? Uh, at what, what, what was the, the, the area where the, the, the talks failed? Of course, uh, one main uh, uh, subject of uh, the, the talk is uh, the... Uh, clear the obvious uh, uh, development in the autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao. Okay. Because uh, the government uh, uh, <coughs> believe, and actually it's already uh, uh, the, the guy is already appointed uh, who is believed to be non-MNLF. Okay. And uh, we all know that autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao is uh. part of the Final peace agreement. Okay, we all yes. know that uh, Chairman Noor 
and after the signing of the final peace agreement, became regional governor of uh -huh. the autonomous correct, region correct. in Mr. Mina. Now, yes, yes. Uh, he was actually uh, uncontested. Uh -huh. He was never contested by anyone yes, yes. Uh, because that was part of the deal. And afterwards, so uh, the autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao now, as we know, it is now uh, run by non-MNLF actually. How, what is what is the sentiment of the MNLF vis-a-vis -vis the ongoing peace talks between the government and the Moro Islamic Liberation Front? Uh, and as far as the MNLF uh, is concerned, uh, they have uh, realized that that the government uh, has violated. Okay. All the uh, consensus that's, that was reached since from the time that the denegotiation was uh, organized, actually, from 1973 uh, in Indonesia, uh, no, in, in uh, uh, Libya, and then in uh, Kuala Lumpur in 1974, and then up to the Tripoli Agreement in 1976. Okay. And to the 1996 final peace agreement. Do you feel that the government is taking sides in favor of the MILF over the interests of the MNLF? Do uh, you sense that? Do you sense that? Yeah, of course, we cannot say that categorically but of, yeah, of uh, favoring. Uh, but then uh, what is clear is that uh, the government has stepped on uh, to the other side uh, in which the other side has not been uh, complied with. Okay. In other words, uh, the, gov the government has an understanding agreement yes. uh, between uh, the, with the MNLF and okay. as far as the Mindanao resolution is concerned. Is the MNLF going to stand on the OIC resolution that you are the sole representative of the Bangsamoro people? and that there is no other organization that should represent the Bangsamoro interest? Of course, that is uh, the premise. And okay. the MNLF is the only entity that is being recognized uh -huh. by the Organization of the Islamic Countries correct, to that correct. effect. So what is the MILF? They have no business in short. Uh, yes, actually. As actually, uh, the, okay. the MNLF, uh, the MILF is actually... Uh, An interloper, is that what yes, we're saying? No, not really, but uh, as, as we all know that the, the MILF is uh, actually a byproduct of the MNLF. So okay. out of the uh, 1996, uh, 1976 uh, Tripoli Agreement... Do they represent the Bangsamoro interest? Or do they represent somebody else's interest? Uh, of course, that is their claim. But uh, as far as the MNLF is concerned, uh, we could uh, see otherwise. Okay. Uh, first and foremost, of the third party that is involved, uh -huh. uh, the Malaysian, uh, for instance, is the one that is brokering the peace efforts now. Uh -huh. And to us, they are actually unreliable because of the vested interest, because of the Saba issue. Okay. Is, is, is uh, the MILF a good representative of the Bangsamoro interest? Are the Malaysians a reliable uh, <laughs> negotiator or, uh, you know, a, a, a third party observer to the negotiations? Yes. Eric, uh, let me come in and interject yeah, my yeah. observation yes, yes. on two points, uh, points yes. on two identities. Yes, One yes. is as a foreign minister for public affairs yes, uh, yes. Sultan, for the Sultanate. Yes. And second, or foremost, is being a journalist. Yes, yes. I think it is farcical yes. in the first place to have invited Malaysia to participate in the peace talks because Malaysia has a very big stake in the Saba equation. Okay. And it is uh, my observation that whatever would model the issue yes. would uh, redound to the good or to the advantage of Malaysia. Okay. So on this note, I think that no, Malaysia is uh, not uh, the right party to negotiate or to mediate uh -huh. between these uh, internal problems that we're having right uh -huh. now. And I think uh, the Prince Omar here can elucidate better on that score because he is uh, very much passionate on the Saba recovery issue. Yeah, before uh, I, I, I move to the, the main meat of the, the, the issue, I just want to know how did the MILF react to the Declaration of Independence by the MNLF, especially that it included Saba? 
I think uh, we have been deepened by their silence. Uh -huh. They're very silent about it. Shouldn't they be happy that they, the MNLF was able to do something that the MILF could not do? <laughs> in behalf of the, <laughs> the Bangsamoro people, in behalf of the Tausugs? Actually, the, uh, I think last month, the, MNL, the MILF leadership was calling for a unity meeting. Okay. Uh, between the MILF and the MNLF. Yes. Actually, it was attended to by a number of the MNLF uh, senior officers. But? Yeah. So, they actually uh, arrived to a consensus that really they need to stand together uh -huh. in as far as the interests of the people of Mindanao. Yes. Or, in other words, the interests of the Bangsamoro people. But, but I, I get this sense, I'm sorry to say, that it's like water and, and oil. You know, because their source of interest comes from a foreign entity and your source of interest is homegrown. So I, I don't know, I might be wrong, no? But here you are able to say independence for Sabah, independence for Mindanao. The question is, can the MILF say independence also for Sabah? <laughs> <laughs> do they, can, they, can they do that? <laughs> they, they, Prince Kiram? They would not and they could not. <coughs> because uh, let us remind everyone that the MILF is financially supported by Malaysia. Uh -huh. And therefore, the MILF can be regarded as surrogate of Malaysia. Mm -hmm. Now, the main policy of Malaysia is expansionist policies Correct, yes. that has escaped the realities of Filipino politicians. Mm -hmm. We also would like to remind everyone that Malaysia has occupied illegally our Saba property since 1963 mm -hmm. and coupled with that also they have also occupied more than a dozen islands of our Spratlys archipelago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So having said all that, Malaysia's support to the MILF is really to further their illegal occupation of Saba and the illegal occupation of the Spratlys. Mm -hmm. To have Malaysia as the peace broker between the Philippines and the MILF it's a weird composition of any political logic or political realities mm -hmm. that any poli Filipino politician should really reconsider. Mm -hmm. So short of saying, the MILF does not represent the true interests of the Bangsamoro people. You said that. <laughs> would, that would that be a fair statement? I mean, are all three of you in agreement that they, they, they're not <coughs> actually a true representative of the Bangsamoro interest because... Uh, they, 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 they are agents of a, of a principal, in short. Yes, well, uh, the, there was a uh, comment made by uh, an officer of the MILF quoting Malaysia, saying that Malaysia is hopeful that in the event of a peace agreement between the MILF, the Moro Islamic Liberation Front, and the Philippines, that Malaysia is hopeful that the Philippines will finally drop the Saba recovery matter <laughs> once and for all. So Malaysia is really banking and funding the secessionist movement of the MILF in Mindanao mm -hmm. because they wanted to uh, perpetuate their illegal stay in Saba and in Spratlys. Mm -hmm. The question is, will the Filipino nation allow such realities to occur? Mm -hmm. This is now... This is now, you know, very clear in my mind because I've, I've spoken to some members of, uh, of uh, the Liberal Party and uh, some of them have so spoken to um, President uh, Aquino about this. A and this begs the question, why does the government continue to proceed with Malaysia, you know? As peace broker. As peace broker between the government and the MILF. Why, why do they continue on this track? Ito ba yung matuwid na taan? Or is this a one-track mind? Right now, I'm just yearning magkaroon ng matuwid na kasagutan. kasagutan. It's it just a scapegoat, I think. Uh, because uh, they failed uh, to comply with the final peace agreement of 1996 uh -huh. with the MNLF. Yes. So, you know, they, one way or the other, they look for a, a way that they could be excused. Yeah, they, they are now saying that the MNLF has no capability you know, to carry out the, uh, the agreement, and that's why now, as uh, it is 
uh, seen that uh, arm now is manned by the my non immunolet but i think uh, i don't want to, to to argue for your cause but i think it is the MNLF that is recognized by the OIC. I mean, whether whether you're only one person or a group of persons or yes. you have the capability for war or not at all, the point is you are the legal entity recognized by uh, the, the OIC. OIC. So yes, it is. So, Yeah, that's why uh, as to many uh, MNLF uh, fighters, actually, most senior leaders uh, treated the, the action from Malacanang, appointing someone who is not from the MNLF, as a provocative uh, act on the part of the MNLF. Baron Carbonell, are we saying that we, the government is now recognizing the MILF because they are the ones who have the war-making capability? Is this the kind of message the government is trying to tell our public, that if you have the war-making capability, we're going to take the time out to negotiate with you and be able to talk to you because you can create trouble? And for these people, just because they are a spent force, they are the ones officially recognized by the OIC, well, you know, they, we can put them in the back burners. Is that the message that we're trying to say? Let me agree with you, yes. <laughs> My goodness. But th that is the wrong message. Well, it's serving their purpose. They're making use of that uh, uh, capability to be violent as a leverage for negotiation. Uh, what are we telling future rebels or you know future hotheads uh, that you know if we cannot get what we want, let's get our arms and then we are sure the government will talk to us, irregardless of whether we have a proper claim or a legal claim or not. Yes. Eric. Uh, Kailan ba nagkaroon ng consideration sa future ang ating gobyerno? So, uh, th this is now what worries me because I think, you know, we're, we're dealing in... Uh, Just like in the autonomous region of Muslim Mindanao. Right now, what we are seeing is farcical autonomy. Mm -hmm. It is everything else except autonomous. And yet, it's serving the purpose right now. Never mind the future. Nobody cares about the future. Prince Kiram, you talked about... Malaysia funding the MILF. <coughs> Do you think Malaysia, with its vast resources, is only funding the MILF? Or do you think uh, with their, uh, with their uh, hegemonistic intent, do you think they would even go beyond uh, funding just the MILF? Or are they going, beyond, uh, are they going to the local level, local uh, politicians, national politicians, congressmen, even presidents? Well, the... The expansionist tendencies of Malaysia is really to uh, uh, pursue their imperialistic designs mm -hmm. uh, to expand the borders of Malaysia because since the Feder Federation of Malaysia was actually created in 1962 or mm -hmm. 63, mm -hmm. Uh, the reality is, as we prefaced earlier, escape the consciousness and knowledge of people. First, when Brunei, when the Kingdom of Brunei was a British protectorate, mm -hmm. the Englishmen created 4,000 square miles of Brunei territory. Mm -hmm. Today, only 1,800 square miles of Brunei remain. Because? Because 1,200 square miles was actually grabbed by Malaysia to be added to Sarawak. And, and, and Brunei cannot do anything? And Brunei could not do anything, tiny Brunei. Uh, uh -huh. Second, Malaysia, as you know, unlawfully and illegally occupied Sabah since 1963 to this day. Uh -huh. And, of course, they also grabbed the Indonesian uh, islands of Ambalat region, yes. full of oil and gas. Yes, yes. Now, thirdly, that uh, is also going, they also grabbed our islands in the Ispratlis correct, correct. because of their illegal stay in Sabah. It's furious claims, but nonetheless, they have uh, been perpetuating such uh, illegal occupations of many lands. And they're also funding the secessionist movements in yes. Thailand. Yes, out of their one million barrels of oil that they pump uh, every day from our Sabah property. Mm -hmm. they, uh, they had been funding not only the secessionist movements in the Philippines, but also we know Islamic leaders uh, in Mindanao. Uh, political leaders uh, by mm -hmm. promises of scholarship in Malaysian universities, uh, by funding their so-called foundations mm -hmm. for fish and friendship with Malaysia. Mm -hmm. 
So funding even the fake sultans. And even the well, fake sultans of Mindanao I will are cut, funded by I'll, Malaysia. I'll, I'll cut you short on that. Uh, when Republican returns, we're going to touch off on these fake sultans and uh, all these other local leaders. And we're going to ask even, especially with 2013 fast approaching, will Malaysia even go as far as funding senators and, you know, uh, paying whoever uh, in order to, 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 to destroy our national interest when we return? Okay, nagbabalik po ang Republika, Conference si Eric Espina. At uh, meron tayong nabibiti na katanungan dito. Ano po itong mga, may mga fake uh, sultanates or sultans na pinapalawak ng Malaysia? Ano bang mga, ano bang kwento nito? What is the story behind this? Well, as uh, we already fully understand, Malaysia is funding and financing fake sultans of Sulu and Sabah mm -hmm. to destroy the true sultan. Mm -hmm. Because only the true Sultan, Sultan Fuad Kiram, mm -hmm. has been in the forefront since he was crowned uh, Sultan of Sulu and Sabah mm -hmm. to recover Sabah and his practice from Malaysia. Mm -hmm. Now, what Malaysia did was to install fake Sultans, and there are many of them, more than a dozen, mm -hmm. uh, because they feel that if they want to stop the Malaysian illegal occupation of Sabah, mm -hmm. then they must really stop the true sultan. Mm -hmm. And to do it is to uh, uh, put in so many sultans so that everyone will be confused. Mm -hmm. Now, we would like to remind our good friends that there is one simple, simple mm -hmm. sign and symbol that you will recognize who is the true sultan. Mm -hmm. And that is by primogeniture. It means the son of the sultan mm -hmm. must become sultan no one else. Mm -hmm. All of the so-called sultans claiming to be sultan of Sulu and Saba mm -hmm. are false mm -hmm. because there is only one son of sultan mm -hmm. and that is sultan Fuad Kiram mm -hmm. because his father was sultan Muhammad Ismail Ikram the first, mm -hmm. the sultan from 1947 to 1973, the same sultan who transferred the sovereignty of Sabah to the Filipino people mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in September of 1962. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the others are fake sultans and bogus, mm -hmm. and they should not be believed or listened to, mm -hmm. except, of course, Sultan Fuad Kiram, because he is the last son of Sultan Muhammad Ismail Ikiram I. Baron Carbonell, you're a journalist. Uh, you have your ears on the ground. Bakit matigas ang ulo ng gobyerno? Ay, hindi ko malang maintindihan talaga. Bakit? Alak, I, mean, I would like to think hindi sila bobo, no? Naintindihan nila kung ano nangyayari. Alam nila ano ang laro ng Ma Malaysia dito. Why, um, why do they persist? Ang aking tingin, ang concern, ang number one priority ng gobyerno uh -oh. is to stay uh, as a government. Okay. Sa kanilang naranasan ng mga kudita, mga destabilization, okay. oh. ang kanilang prioridad ay kung paano malilesen ang mga kaaway ng gobyerno okay. at hindi magugulo yung kanilang uh, panunungkulan o okay. kanilang pamahalaan. Okay. So, on that basis, na kukompromise ang prinsipyo, na kukompromise ang anong matuwid, okay. na kukompromise ang tamang hangarin o gawain dapat ng gobyerno. Mm -hmm. I think it is a political compromise. Okay. If whenever the very existence of a government is in question, uh -huh. 
then they'd rather stay on the safe side, negotiate with the other uh, troublemakers, make them happy on the sides. And I think that's one of the reasons why the Saba claim was deprioritized for these many regimes. Mm -hmm. so, so, uh, Prince Giram, do you think uh, in the past administrations, the <laughs> Malaysians uh, will even go as far as funding presidents? presidential elections and when they when their when their candidates become presidents uh, be able to seduce them in order to uh, have friendly terms uh, and uh, and uh, alliances with the incumbent presidents is that possible <laughs> okay of course everything is possible uh, okay. because we also we were informed we are a privy to some incidents whereby the Malaysian ambassador mm -hmm. was really responsible <coughs> for handing out the money. Really? Yes. Uh, to support uh, two fake sultans we know. Okay. And therefore, uh, such uh, hypothesis from you is not impossible to happen. How about presidents? Presidents of the Republic or would-be candidates for presidents? Well, like we said, uh, that's possible. Everything is possible. Yes. E even senators. Well, uh, in when you look at the position of Malaysia, <coughs> they would do everything to hang on to Sabah and spread news illegally. Okay. Um, the, the the royal sultanate has a has uh, some proposals for. Uh, uh, try to create an area of uh, peace in uh, southern Mindanao. And maybe it would be a good thing if we can uh, look at this, uh, 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 these 10 points. Uh, this, this is a, a brief on the, the bullets. Can we have them, uh, the, the 10 points, and maybe the, the good uh, sultan can uh, discuss them? Uh, can we have the number one? Um, if our, uh, there. This is a, a shorter version, but I think the the uh, prince can discuss this. To revive the spiritual well-being and to strengthen the arts and culture, customs, traditions of our people. I think uh, you have a longer version. And uh, what is the intent of the, the sultanate here? Yes, the Sultan Fuad Kiram and the royal cabinet are concerned about the well-being of the Taosug people and to uh, perpetuate the unique arts and culture customs and traditions, including the language, the Taosug language, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that distinguish the Taosug Sultanate for centuries as the unconquered kingdom of this country. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we have uh, number two. Uh, can we have uh, number two? Yes. To attain our goals of a new dimension for our people founded on peace, brotherhood, harmony, understanding, tolerance, friendship of all uh, religion. Yes. Sultan Fuad again, and uh, those associated with the crown believe that peace and prosperity for the royal sultanate of Sulu and Sabah, of Mindanao mm -hmm. and the Philippines, can only come from profound uh, stability through peace, brotherhood, harmony, tolerance, and understanding of all religions, mm -hmm. whether Islam or Christianity. Mm -hmm. That will be the basis of a, of a peaceful and a stable nation. Mm -hmm. uh, next is, uh, we have uh, number three. So you, you're not thinking of creating a, um, a uh, caliphate in short? No, we're not. Okay, okay. Uh, which is what I think the MILF want to, want, wants to do. A very highly uh, uh, ultra-religious uh, uh, state or uh, territory? Uh, we we, you are we do not have that in mind. Okay, no. okay. Number three. This is these are these bullet points are a shorter version of uh, actually the the more extensive and lengthy uh, policies of the uh, of uh, His Majesty Sultan Fuad Kiram's uh, ten point agenda. Number three is to pursue the truth. There is only one crown, th uh, one crown and throne of Sulu and Sabah. Of course, uh, for centuries, since 1405 to this mm -hmm. day, there was only one crown and throne of Sulu and Sabah because there's the Islamic tenet of one sultan, one sultanate applies mm -hmm. to the sultanate of Sulu and Sabah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. 
Um, and then uh, we have number four. To continue our move to press for the ending of the Malaysian illegal occupation of Sabah and Spratly since uh, uh, 1963. Yes. The uh, core of our policies is really the return and recovery of Sabah and Spratlys from the illegal occupation of Malaysia since 1963. Mm -hmm. Because we believe that Malaysia should vacate these two properties because they are illegal settlers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the, 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 uh, the Sultanate is talking about uh, peaceful means. Peaceful means. Yes. yes. But um, what happens if there are local movements, uh, Tausugs, right in Sabah, which are marginalized? And they themselves are tired of uh, the way they are being treated, considering that uh, 90 or 95 percent of uh, the natural resources in Sabah is funneled back to Kuala Lumpur. And there is a homegrown, I understand, opposition, political opposition as well in Sabah. Uh, what can you say about uh, those kinds of sentiments growing in Sabah? The you must appreciate that uh, the majority pa population of Sabah are mm -hmm. Sabah Taosugs, mm -hmm. uh, who are in fact blood relations of the Taosugs of Sulu Dominions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, since they are all Muslims, in Muslim there is a Islamic tenet of self-defense. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if aggressive nature and aggressive actions are continually pursued by Malaysia, then the Sabata Usugs can resort to self-defense mm -hmm. measures that, uh, are, are ins that are enshrined in the Quran. Mm -hmm. Okay, number five. After 16 years without full implementation by the government of the Philippines on the terms of the 1996 peace agreement signed between the Philippines and the MNLF, on 18 March 2012, the MNLF was compelled to declare independence of Mindanao, including the Royal Sultanate Dominions of Zamboanga, Basilan Sulu, Tawi Tawi, Palawan, and Sabah. Yes, the 18 March uh, 2012 declaration of independence of Mindanao, as uh, we understand, is a result of the failure of the Philippine government to implement fully the terms of that uh, peace agreement signed by former President Ramos mm -hmm. with uh, MNLF Chairman Nur Miswari. Mm -hmm. And as a consequence, uh, they were left with no option but to uh, pursue self-determination as mm -hmm. enshrined in the Charter of the mm -hmm. United Nations. Mm -hmm. G General Habib, um, what has been the reaction of Indonesia regarding this declaration? Of course, uh, they have uh, realized that uh, there is uh, really a, a clear uh -huh. indication that the government has not complied. Okay. Uh, the truth of the matter, they have been uh, in a constant uh, hosting of uh, the denegotiation the as far as the revisit of the 1996 Final Peace Agreement. So that is it. Has the OIC come up with a position vis-a-vis -vis the Philippine government and its continuous entertainment uh, negotiating with the MILF? No position? Very quiet about it? Has the MNLF come up with a, a proposal uh, with the OIC regarding uh, why the Philippines continues to negotiate with the MILF when the OIC recognizes the MNLF as the uh, rep sole representative of the Bangsamoro interest? Yeah, the OIC actually is consistent with their position okay. to implement in full the 1996 okay. Final Peace Agreement. But has, but has it come up with another resolution with regards commenting on the Philippine continuous negotiation with the MILF? So far, none. None. But are you making proposals? Are you coming up with some form of uh, endorsements uh, in order for the OIC to, to come up with maybe with any position at all or, or to voice out their... Uh, the sentiment regarding uh, the Philippines' continuous negotiation with the, with the uh, MILF? The MNLF leadership has uh, constantly uh, stating uh, his position mm -hmm. that uh, before jumping into anything mm -hmm. with the MILF, uh, the final peace agreement of 1996 should be considered. Mm -hmm. So he is consistent up to the point that uh, the Bandung uh, talk uh, was concluded to be a failure. So now that's why, uh, in, uh, in as far as we are concerned, 
as part of the MNLF and uh -huh. part of the Sultanate, uh, we don't want that hostility will arise in Mindanao because uh, at the end of the day, when this happens, the civilians, the one would suffer. Are you worried that one of these days the government will come up with an agreement with the MILF and the MNLF is marginal? Yes, uh, we, we are not worried actually. We are anticipating that... Uh, it's agree going to happen. Yeah, agreement would, uh, would happen. But uh, we don't think so that uh, such, an such an agreement would have, uh, would have uh, something that would be uh, considered to be good for the people. Because uh, uh, case in point that uh, we do not believe uh, to such extent, because even the 1996 peace agreement has been failed. So what can we expect from an agreement which is unseen yet? What happens? Of course, this is highly theoretical. What happens? Government enters into the agreement with the, with the MILF. It violates the rights of the MNLF. Yes, what of is course. the position of the OIC in a situation like that? Will it recognize the, the agreement made between the MILF and the Philippines? Of course, the OIC maintains the position that uh, it is, of course, domestic problem. So it is up now for the government uh, of the Republic of the Philippines to, uh, to see what is, what is best uh -huh. and as far as the national interest is concerned. But uh, the OIC is uh, only concerned about the plight of the Muslim in the South uh, uh, in as far as the uh, hostilities uh, are concerned. Uh -huh. So that is uh, uh, their participation actually uh -huh. in prevention of the hostility because uh, not actually the fighters that would suffer, uh -huh. the ma majority of the civilians. Uh -huh. uh, like for instance, if this happens, mm -hmm. if the government would entertain, entertain seriously that declaration, it would mean it would translate into conflict mm -hmm. because the MNLF uh, saying we are in a position on self-defense yes, uh, yes, yes. Yes, uh, position uh -huh. because that is the dictates of Islam. But if there is an aggression from uh, outside, we are compelled. Uh, we are compelled to defend our rights. Uh -huh. So what happens if the MILF take over certain areas of the MNLF? Uh, of course, the same thing. Uh, we'll will have to defend it. Yeah, but I don't think so. In as far as the okay. MILF is concerned, would do that. Okay. Before yeah. we return to number six, uh, Baron, wh what will happen? Um, did you ever foresee, as a journalist, that? MNLF split into the MILF, and then there will be a third force, and there will be a fourth force. Could that happen? Do you think that could happen? Uh, I think unless somebody will orchestrate it, it will not. Because as it is, they know that they are having a hard time answering the queries from the general Muslim constituency in Mindanao. Uh -huh, because I, I can almost foresee what's going to happen is now there are almost there are three. I hope it doesn't happen. There will be four representing the, 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 the Bangsa, claiming to represent the Bangsa Moro interest. Anyway, uh, number six. Uh, policies of His Majesty Sultan Fuad Ekeran I to reunite the thousands of Sulu dominions and the thousands of Saba who are for centuries were together as one people. We propose the creation of the Sulu Saba genuine autonomous region as part of the Philippines. Yes. <coughs> we believe that the ongoing saga of uh, chaos and the uh, secessionist uh, moves in Mindanao can be attributed to the aspirations of the Muslim minorities mm -hmm. to have governance of their own. Mm -hmm. And uh, the 1996 peace agreement was signed uh, to create the ARMM, but okay. the ARMM failed uh, the Muslims of Mindanao mm -hmm. because there is no autonomy except the name. Mm -hmm. What we propose is the genuine autonomous region of mm -hmm. Sulu and Saba that will reunite the Taosugs of Sulu with the Taosugs of Saba. Mm -hmm. We said reunite because the Taosugs of Saba will not join mm -hmm. any entity in the Philippines that is governed directly by the Christian majority mm -hmm. for good reasons. Mm -hmm. But they stated that they will rejoin the Taosugs of Sulu if they are independent and mm -hmm. or with genu genuine autonomy patterned after Alan Sumi of Finland. We, will the Taosugs recognize the MILF also? The, the, 
the Tao Sub Sub Saba recognized the MNLF okay. because very clear. Uh, we do have an MNLF contingent in Saba. Okay, number seven. Uh, time is a uh, little getting short. What is our number seven? Okay, Cent uh, central to our Sulu Saba genuine autonomous region policies for the MNLF to become a political party with other political parties. What's the solution there? Yes, in our Sulu Saba genuine autonomous region, uh, we must state that we will have a parliament elected by mm -hmm. our people. Mm -hmm. And in that parliament, we envisage that the MNLF will be a major political party with other political parties mm -hmm. uh, who will, that will contest the election. And any, any party with majority seats in parliament will uh, form the government. Okay, number eight. To work for peace and prosperity for our beloved Royal Sultanate. Yes, we, it is always the central and core of our policies to work for peace and prosperity as well as understanding and tolerance of all religions, mm -hmm. not only in our Royal Sultanate, but in Mindanao and the Philippines and the region. Mm -hmm. And then number nine. To enhance, foster, and develop long-lasting bond of friendship, mutual cooperation, and links with the Philippine government and others. Yes, definitely. We uh, pursue that because the Royal Sultanate uh, of Sulu and Sabah majority are in the Philippines. Uh -huh. And therefore, we would like to continue such brotherly links and friendly links with uh, the Philippines. And uh, finally, number 10. To reject terrorism and other extremist fanaticism in our uh, Royal Sultanate and in the Philippines. Yes, we do not support terrorism and extremist fanaticism. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the, the, this, is, this is just snippets that we presented to our public. Uh, of course, uh, there's a longer version of this. Uh, I'm sure the, the good prince will tell us where to find it. Uh, final words, uh, may, may, may we ask from uh, G General uh, Nikabulin. Yes, uh, magandang araw sa inyong lahat mga tagapakinig. Uh, ang aming hangarin lang uh, uh, sa MNLF at sa Sultanate ay magkaroon ng tunay na kapayapaan sa Mindanao. Uh -huh. At mararating lang ito kung gagawa tayo ng uh, tuwid na daan patungo uh -huh. uh, sa uh, kapayapaan na yan at kaundaran na yan. Uh -huh. At yun ay ang sinceridad. sinceridad. Uh, sincerity on the part of the government and sincerity on the part of the MNLF uh -huh. or the MILF. Okay. Uh, so that's all. Uh, we can arrive to that point. Inshallah. Okay, God uh, I'll ask you five seconds and then five seconds. <laughs> okay, yeah. Ang ating pong problema ngayon, kasamang Eric, uh, ay ekonomiya. Okay. Ang hindi ko maintindihan ay bakit hindi natin nakikita yung yaman ng Pilipinas at ng Sultanate na naghihintay na atin lamang hahanguin mula sa ating Saba claim. Amen. Friends for Kiram. The Sulu Saba Genuine Autonomous Region is patterned after the Alan Sumi of Finland. Yes, yes. And that Alan Sumi of Finland has its own parliament and government mm -hmm. within the jurisdiction of Finland. Mm -hmm. So we propose the same, but within the territory of the Philippines that will not carb any territory of the Philippines and it will share in the taxes, riches, and uh, resources of the Sulu Saba genuine autonomous region. Well, with that, uh, wala na po tayong panahon and um, Everything has been said. Ito po si Eric Spina, palagi po nagsasabi sa inyo, makialam. Uh, importante po na kailangan ay makialam kayo at importante rin na kailangan ay manindigan kayo sapagkat wala pong magmamahal sa Pilipino kung hindi ang Pilipino. Dagang salamat, maing gabi, ikanin yung talan.